You are, buddy. Uh, good morning, dear friend. I want to welcome you all to the Sunday morning broadcast from the Mountain View Independent Baptist Church. It's Preacher Bobby Thumb. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, being a part of our broadcast. Hope that will be a blessing to you this day. I want to take just a minute and invite you all out to church. And we're located at 199 Myers Lane. Just turn to go to the food line store and uh, turn down that road between food line and dollar store. And you can see the church right in front of you. Uh, Sunday school's at 10, morning worship service at 11, evening worship service on Sunday at 6, Wednesday night Bible study at 7, and Kids Connection is at 6. And as we always say, we've got classes in our Kids Connection, our youth group, and Sunday school for all ages. And you're certainly welcome to come out if you don't have a home church. We'd love for you to come out and visit with us. If you do, of course, your pastor will be expecting you and you want to be there. So I'm going to go back to the book of 2 Timothy, chapter number 4. Last week we had a Memorial Day's message. And uh, uh, God bless all of our, our men and women in our military and, and the memories of the fallen soldiers. And uh, we'll be preaching again out of 2 Timothy, chapter number 4. So if you have your Bibles, it's 2 Timothy 4, verses 6 and number 7. And this is a scripture the Apostle Paul uh, tried to educate and help a young preacher get started in the ministry named Timothy. And Paul's saying there's a beginning and there's also an end uh, to life and to, to ministry and to work. And Paul's uh, saying he's been faithful said, uh, Timothy, you need to know a few things about the ministry, and it, uh, it'll help you. And he wanted uh, Timothy to know some of the things that he had experienced uh, out into the mission, mission field and out, out into preaching and the, and the things that you can expect from this world. And he says in Second Timothy 4, verse 6 and 7, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And the Apostle Paul is uh, warning Timothy about what he had been through. But before we get into the message, let's have a word of prayer. Father God, as we bow before you, Lord, thanking you so much for the gift of the day, for the opportunity to be in your house, to stand in the pulpit, to proclaim your precious word. Father, we pray for this broadcast. We pray for the message, for the power of God, for the words to say, for the discernment and clarity of thought, wisdom. We pray for those who are listening. God, we pray for WAF radio station and, Lord, for everything that they have done to get the message of the gospel out and good gospel singing. Lord, we pray, God, that you would ever bless them and all that they do. We pray for every home that's listening this day if there's any that's never been saved we pray that this will be the day they receive christ as their savior we pray for every home every family god we pray for every marriage lord we pray for our city for our county for our nation I always pray for our first responders for the police and the firefighters and the rescue squad and the ambulance the emts the doctors the nurses for our military and their families wherever they might be serving. God, we pray that you'd ever bless them, keep them safe, watch over them. We do pray that our nation would once again turn and turn back to the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, that they would start coming back to church and pick up a Bible and pray and just turn their life back over to the Lord. Lord, this is a Christian nation, and we pray that the United States of America would turn back to Christ. And we ask your blessing upon this message in Christ Jesus' precious holy name we pray, and amen. He said he's ready to be offered. Now, the Apostle Paul says he's prepared, but he's not only prepared, but he's willing. I think, church, if we ever get in the Word of God and if we know what's waiting for us on the other side, a new body in heaven and the rapture of the church and and uh, Jesus Christ to be waiting for us. There's angels in heaven. There's our departed loved ones and friends that have already gone on. And there's a lot better on the other side than it is on this side. And Paul's been there and he understands that. But he's trying to give courage because it seems like every time that a, a minister, a preacher, 
leaves this world and, and goes home to be with the Lord, that it leaves a, a void, a vacancy. But Paul's recognizing that there's a young preacher named Timothy that's going into, into the preaching field. And even though Paul, even though Paul is going to heaven, God still is uh, calling younger preachers, new preachers. God is, doesn't let the preachers just die out and, and not be here. God needs the preachers here. God uh, is saving uh, lost souls, and God's still calling men into the ministry. And Paul recognizes that Timothy is called of God, and, pit, and, and Paul's trying to help him. And he's telling him it's gotten rough from time to time, but it's the rewards of, of preaching is, is well worth it. The blessings are far more than, than uh, the hurts that, that might be out there. And he's saying he's ready to be offered. And he's not talking about as a sacrifice. Jesus was the sacrifice. But he's saying he's ready to be offered. That simply means he's ready to be released. He wants to be released from this body, to be released from this world. He wants to be into the presence of, of Almighty God. Paul's seen the third heaven. He knows what's there. And he's saying that the suffering of this world cannot even compare to the blessings waiting us on the other side. He's saying if we leave here, we leave our pain behind us, the suffering behind us, the past mistakes all that's behind us. We don't have to worry about that anymore. Isn't it good to know that we don't take our past to heaven with us? Isn't it good to know that we don't have to take the sin? We don't take this sinful nature? We don't take the devil with us? We don't have to worry about any of that. Paul is trying to get Timothy to, to know that how you face death as a Christian, as you're saved, is you don't have to fear death. Death is a release from this body, from this world, and acceptance on the other side into heaven. I mean, I can just imagine what Peter, James, and John thought when they, Jesus took them on the Mount of Transfiguration and heaven opened up and they saw Moses, Elijah, and Jesus in his transfigured body, his glorified body, and that had to make them excited to know that whatever they endured down here on earth was far worth it. When we get to the other side. And he set an example to Timothy. Timothy, I don't fear death. I don't dread death. I look forward as death as a way to come be into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and all of heaven. And he said, I am ready to be offered. And that's the message that we preach. We don't fear death if we're saved. We don't worry about what's on the other side. The Bible clearly spells out heaven's waiting for us on the other side. And I know it's, it may seem different for a minister or for a preacher, but we're human. We're sinners saved by God's amazing grace, called out from among the brethren to preach the word. And the message that we preach concerning death is that death is a release here that God would take us to the other side. It's an example to Timothy. If the preacher stands strong and, and stands in the scriptures is what the Apostle Paul's doing. He said, I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. So you see how personal it is. He knows it's about him. God has already told him He's getting ready to call him home. And people have different opinions that I know. Uh, some will think, uh, do I want to know that I'm dying with a terminal illness? Do I know that the doctors are telling me there's really no hope of, of recovering? Or do I want to go quickly? And God chose to let the Apostle Paul know that his time is at hand. He let him make all the arrangements. And what Paul's doing in his last days, if you will, is uh, giving encouragement to a young preacher. He said, Timothy, I fought a good fight. I've preached every word God told me to preach. I've done everything he's told me to do. My work here is done. And then I'm going to my rest up into heaven. And so he's given Timothy a message as an example to preach to the others. Because what God is saying is that the message that the Apostle Paul has given to Timothy is the, is the message he wants Timothy to give to those that he preaches to. 
God is going to take us to glory. It's you don't have to worry. All these these TV shows that you see here on the on the movies about ghost hunters and uh, lost spirits and spirits of of, of bodies of people who's died and they're confused and don't know where to go and they hover at this place and they hover at that place. That ain't what the Bible says. The Bible says if you die saved, your soul and spirit goes directly into heaven. And that's the message he's given Timothy. That's the message he wants him to know. And he said that he's leaving a work that he's loved. Paul's not saying, I'm glad that it's over. It's just time for me to go. God says it's time for me to come home. It's time for me that my work is done. It's time for me to let someone else and step aside so someone else can preach the gospel so that they can do the work God has called them in to do. And when their time comes, they'll step aside God will call them home and another preacher until God raptures his church that's just the way it's been is that when one preacher goes home God calls another preacher to do the same work and they may preach to a different part of the country they may uh, they may they may preach in, in a different field but it's nonetheless they're preaching for the Lord Jesus Christ he's the one that saves us he's the one that calls us he's the one that sends us he's the one that empowers us He's the one that puts the gift inside of us. And what he's trying to say, he said, there's been preachers before me. They've already gone on. There's preachers that's coming after me. And that's, that's just the way that this does work. So, Timothy, here's the message. I'm ready to be offered. My time is at hand. It's time for me to leave this world. I love the work I'm doing. I love preaching for the Lord. It ain't always been easy. It's not always been a, a bed of roses, if you will. There's been difficulties. There's been times this old body suffered. There's been times I've been cold and hot and hungered. There's times I've been arrested and chained and handcuffed. There's times I've been shipwrecked. There's times I've been beaten. There's times I've preached to enemies. There's times I've preached to friends but nonetheless I love the work God called me to do and I can, t I can tell you, I can identify with that. Of all the things that I've ever done in my life, whether it be running heavy equipment or whether it be driving a truck or farming or it, just whatever it is, I've got to tell you, preaching the Word of God has been the favorite thing that God's ever allowed me to do. And it's what I love getting up every morning. I love being a pastor. I love preaching the Word. I, the wor I love the work that... Uh, God's called me into but the truth of it is if God stays his coming and the rapture doesn't take place before he calls me home there's coming a day that old Bobby preacher Bobby here is going to be called home and that's going to leave an opening and God is going to have another preacher ready and another preacher is going to come preach but he'll be preaching for the same God I preached for he'll be preaching the same message he'll be preaching the same gospel uh, he'll be in this pulpit that I'm standing behind right now and the world work of God is going to go on. He said, occupy till I come. And we occupy until he comes or he calls us home. And that's the message that the Apostle Paul is trying to get across into Timothy is saying, my work is done. Your work is beginning. And you're just going to preach until God calls you home. And then there'll be somebody else that God is prepared to follow, follow your footsteps. And God to give him a work. And God to give him a path. And God to give him a field to preach in. And God give him a congregation to preach to and that's the way we all we all preach for the Lord Jesus Christ and you see his his salvation took him from Damascus Road that's where he met the Lord Jesus Christ he went on Damascus Road and a first meeting with Jesus he's been through prison he's been through shipwreck he's been beaten and now it's taken him to death you see none of us know what path that we're going to walk from the time God saves us until he calls us into the ministry and into the mission field we don't know what we're going to face. We don't always know who we're going to preach to. We don't know the path that we're going to walk. God leads us. God has led me to three different churches. God has led me through some evangelistic work. I've never been in the foreign field. I've never been out on the mission field in a different country. But God has led me in, in uh, several different counties to preach in. And I don't know where I'll be, uh, where God may lead. As long as I'm drawing breath and able to preach, God may lead me somewhere else. I don't know that. I just have to follow 
the Lord Jesus Christ and where he would have me to go. And that's what Paul's done. said, I've went everywhere he told me to go. I preached to everybody he told me to preach. I've preached what he's told me to preach. I've written the books of the Bible that he told me to. I've done everything. My work is completed. Now, Timothy, you're going to have to pick up and whatever God would have you to do, that's what you need to do. So Paul's journey took him through some hardships. He said, even verse 7, he said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Notice in verse 6, it was my departure is at hand. And verse number 7, it is my course. I have kept the faith. You see, that's one thing, uh, dear friend, we want to say at the end of our journey, at when the last day and the last message that a, a preacher gets up to preach, and we face God the next breath, <coughs> We want to be able to say, I've kept the faith. I've not been in a while and out a while. I've not changed anything. I've done everything that God would have me to do. And God is with him from the time that he met him on the road to Damascus. God walked with him every single step of the way, was with him every moment, every second of his life. And God gave him the power that uh, he, he rarely gave. Uh, God, he had a, a power to and authority to heal diseases and to raise the dead. And God gave him the messages and he gave him the words to write. And you see, he did it publicly. You can't get any more public than being out in the, in the, in the public where people can see your life every day. And nothing was hidden with the Apostle Paul. But it was public because Paul wrote it down in letters that became books of the Bible. 13 has his name on it as the author. 14, if you believe he wrote Hebrews, there's author unknown, but I can attribute that to Paul. But you see, Paul's life was public. And if you got to know, if you are a, a preacher, you're a minister, our life is public. We really do live in a glass house. Uh, people notice our life. They notice who we run around with. They notice the life that we live. They notice the places we go, the people we're with, uh, the things that we say. Our life is public, and there's always somebody watching. And some people watch as an encouragement. Some people watch to try to find see if you can fall or if they can find a fault with you. And uh, not everybody, uh, Paul didn't, not everybody was a fan of Paul's when he was preaching, but many people were. It's the same thing today. You can hear, mention a preacher's name in the county, and you'll have some that say, oh, he's a, yeah, he's a good, and others say, no, he ain't. So you're going to live in the midst of public opinion in the ministry. It's just the world that we live in, I think, dear friend. But his life with Jesus was offered for everybody to see. Paul did not try to hide anything. Paul was as public and as open and as honest as you could possibly be. He shared Jesus in revivals. He shared Jesus when he was healing people. He shared Jesus in the prisons. He shared Jesus on the ships. He shared Jesus wherever he was at. His life was there. It was all about the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether he was among friends or whether he was among enemies, Paul did not change what he believed. You see, it's like Jesus, who was a sacrifice, Paul's life was a sacrifice. He, he said Paul didn't even marry. Paul did, didn't really have a family. Paul said, I just surrendered everything to him. I serve him. I'm a soldier of Jesus. Paul's whole life was all about the Lord Jesus Christ, and he wasn't bivocational. He, did, he was a tent maker for a while, but Paul would do whatever he wanted to. And he even said he wasn't in the ministry for the money. He was in the ministry to preach for the Lord Jesus Christ. He was in it to uplift the name of Jesus and not uplift the name of Paul. Paul believed the cross. He preached the cross. He'd tell you about the cross. Jesus, <coughs> he'd tell you about Jesus. That's who he preached about. Jesus and, and faith in Jesus Christ and not, and not of works, but it was a faith in Christ. He believed that Jesus was the truth and nothing but the truth. And Paul has offered his, his death so that we won't have to fear death. Was it not the Apostle Paul that God gave him the scriptures in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18? Was it not God gave him? He said, look, I already know I don't have nothing to fear. 
I already know I, I don't have to fear death. I don't have to fear going to hell because I know I'm not going. I know where my soul and spirit will go. I ain't worried about this body, but I know where God is going to bring me. I know where I'll be when I leave this old world. And he goes on to say, my, the time of my departure is at hand. That means the time for me to go away is just about here. And some people will face death uh, with fear, others with gladness. And we all face the end, I guess, in a different way. But what God is saying is that we've got scriptures that you don't have to fear death anymore. He said, my time is at hand, which means it's now. Paul said, I'm like a ship that's ready to sail. I have to depart this port, and I have to go to my destination. Ain't you glad that we can get on the gold ship of Zion and leave this old world, climb on that ship, and that ship will take us straight to heaven? You see, Paul is trying to say that my captain's calling, it's time for me to board the old ship of Zion and leave this world. It's time for me to go to heaven. But he said, let me tell you something about the old ship of Zion. He said, there'll be no shipwrecks on this one. Paul said, I know what it's been like. I've been shipwrecked about three times. I know what it's like to be a day and a night in the deep. I know what it's like to have nothing to hang on to but just a bit of a broken piece of wood. But he said, I ain't got to worry about this old ship. This old ship won't sink. This old ship's sailing. Jesus is the captain of this ship. We're going straight to heaven. All of my problems are behind me. Ain't there times, dear friend, where you've been overwhelmed by the things of this world? Sometimes it's family problems. Sometimes it's marital problems. It could be financial problems, emotional problems, problems at church, problems at work, problems at some part of your life. And you know something? There's nowhere we can run. There's nowhere we can go to get away from problems. We just have to take them to Jesus because it doesn't matter where we were. People said, I just need to get away. I just need to go to Gatlinburg. I need to go to the beach. I need to go here. But as long as those problems are on your mind and in your life, you're taking them with you. The best thing we can do, the only time we're really going to leave our problems behind is when we go home to be with the Lord. You see, Paul's uh, saying he's taking pleasure in dying. It ain't, he ain't worried about this old body. He just, can, he just wants to know that uh, he's going to meet with Jesus face to face. And Paul is saying this, I will die serving Jesus. Is that not the way to go? Isn't that not what we want, dear friend? Uh, we can leave this world as really doing nothing with our life, or we can leave this world knowing that we have served God ever since we got saved. Well, we we're building up rewards. If we're going to do anything for our life, the Bible says build your treasures in heaven. Everything you build up that down here, you're going to leave it behind. You ain't taking the bank account. You ain't taking all those awards with you. You ain't taking all the toys that you bought. You're not taking any of the accolades that you've made up down here. Only what you build up into heaven, that's the only thing that's going to meet you there. And Paul says, the works that I've made as to, meant to glorify God, that's what I'm taking with you. All those souls that he's led to the Lord, all those good works that he's done, Paul said, they're going with me. The time of my departures at home, he said, I know there's people like Alexander the coppersmith that's done me much evil. I know that Demas has deserted me and he's went back to the former things. But he said, I tell you, somebody in my life that never left me, that never forsook me, that was with me in this ministry, he was with me every time that I preached. He was with me in prisons. He was with me in shipwrecks. He was with me handcuffed. He was with me beaten in stone. He said it was God. He was right there for all of it. It was him. It was him that gave me the grace to go through the harsh times of my life. You see, God appointed this day for Paul. And God appoints all of us that same day. It's appointed unto man to die, but then there's the judgment. Paul says, I don't have to worry about dying, and I don't have to worry about the judgment. You see, dear friend, number one, if you'll get saved, if you'll be saved, you ain't got to worry about eternity. And if you'll serve God, 
you won't have to worry about the judgment. You see, Paul said, I've done it both. He said, I have served the Lord. You see, now God, who called Paul in his salvation, is now calling him to come home. He called him by his name. You want to know why you persecuting me? God said, Saul persecuted me, but Paul preached for me. Saul was on his way to hell, but Paul is on his way to heaven. You see, God understood the man that he met on the Damascus Road is not the same man that he's going to meet at the edge of heaven. You see, we've got to put on the whole new man. We're not who we used to be. We're a new creature created in Christ Jesus. So Paul, God, who called Paul by his name on the salvation, and it was God who called Paul by his name when he's calling him home. He appointed this day. We're all going to have that same day. One day we're going to leave this world. One day our heart's going to beat for the last time. One day we'll draw our last breath. i got to ask you, dear friend, if you're listening and you've never been saved, are you ready to go? Are you ready to meet the Lord? You see, Paul said this in Philippians 1 and uh, verse 21, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Now, if you can face death with that attitude and that a blessed assurance, you'll never fear a day in your life. Paul's entire ministry was to prepare him for this day so he could prepare others to face death. You see, that's part of what, what ministers do, but not just ministers, friend. That's part of what saved people do. We've got to know within our own self that we don't fear death. We've also got to prepare others that death is nothing they need to fear if they're saved. But dear friend, if you're here and you're listening to this message and you're still lost and you don't know for 100% positive that you're saved, you might want to be getting on your knees and asking God to come into your heart and to save you. You see, even there's even been stories of people who has faced death that would sing hymns in the midst of facing death. Paul said this, My responsibility was this, in his past tense, I fought me a good fight. That's my responsibility, is to show up every day on the battlefield, friend. And what Paul was saying is my final test, my final trial, and my final testimony is I'm ready to go. I've finished my course. I have kept the faith. You see, he experienced physical, spiritual, and emotional war. He's faced sin. He's faced the devil. He's he faced his own flesh. He faced a thorn in his side, which is a messenger of the devil that was sent to buffet him. But he kept on fighting. Paul preached to this generation as a preacher and as a Christian, I mean to his generation. You see, I'm preaching to this generation. And if God stays his coming and I've left this, this world behind, there'll be another preacher that'll preach to that generation. And we keep on preaching to every generation until God calls us all home. Paul kept fighting. Paul said, I'll show you how committed and a fight will show just how committed you are if you're willing to stand on the front line and fight the enemy that stands before you. That shows that you are committed to what you believe if you're willing to stand up against whatever enemy faces you and you stand up for the glory of God. He said, I finished my course. I'm still carrying on my responsibility, but finished means I've completed. My work is done. You see, God has walked the path that he chose for the Apostle Paul, and they've come to the end of that path, just like Psalms 23. When you come to the end of that valley, whether it be the shadow of death or any other, God's been in it every step of the way. God ordained Paul's steps, his path, his course, and his battles. Nothing ever caught God by surprise. He knew who Paul would face, and he knew how Paul would face that enemy. And he's saying, well done, my faithful servant. Paul never quit. He never turned back. And we've got to ask ourselves that question. I ask myself many times, what does my service look like in the eyes of God? Everybody down here has got their own opinion. 
I probably got mine. But what does my service look like there? Because I'd like to be able to say this. I'd like to be able to say two things and have it said about me. One, he preached the Bible. And two, he kept himself blameless before this world and protected that ministry. You see, Paul says it's still been my responsibility to keep the faith. Paul's given a victory speech. I have kept the faith. I just want to thank you so much for listening this morning. I appreciate those who listen every Sunday and WF radio station for making it possible. God bless and have a blessed day.